Hello, loves. Welcome back to the podcast. It's Nina with Passion Squared. I am so grateful you are here today. We have a very special guest. I'm so excited to share with you. Stacy, actually, this is Stacy, a return to the pod. It's been many years. Stacy is the creator, leader, and owner of Mint Haircrafting in Ferndale, Michigan. And most recently, a new concept, which we're going to talk about, Melt at Mint Haircrafting. Stacy, welcome back. Hello. Thank you, Nina. I'm so grateful you're here. Okay, so we got to we got to dive right into this because you know I'm constantly just celebrating you and so obsessed with your commitment to designing elevated experiences. Uh, and and so we got to dive right into this new concept melt, which is focusing on scalp care and head spa experiences. What was your inspiration behind this new concept? So. Quite a few months back, uh, one of our stylists was um, traveling. She was going to go to Japan, and she had mentioned to me some things that she wanted to do while she was there. Um, and in that, you know, she shared with me how uh, one of the classic techniques of Japanese wellness was based in head spa type services. You and I had spent some time together maybe last year, it was like in 2022, 23, and you'd spoken quite a bit about like the... Um, skinification of the beauty industry and the focus going into scalp and um, skin wellness. So you had already kind of set that tone for me to kind of be thinking about this a little bit. And then she had mentioned this to me a bit and um, I had a handful of guests throughout my career. We had already done like a wash house light type of experience, but I never could really create. I always struggled to create what I was really hoping to create inside our space with that. Um, because we just didn't have the the room for it. We're, we were a busy salon. We had three wash bowls and eight stylists. So we never really could create that. And so um, I had a guest who had mentioned to me one of their favorite parts of our experience that had actually kind of gone to the wayside um, post-COVID. And, and it, it kind of sat with me. Mm -hmm. He was someone who I'd taken care of for many years. And um, I, I it sat with me because you know, it was, yeah, it just, it, it stayed with me. And so all of these things were kind of in the back of my mind. And when she was going to Japan, I was like, well, if you get an opportunity to have one of those experiences, I'd love to know how it goes. So it was kind of sitting in the back of my mind. And um, we had done a build out here at our new space in Ferndale um, in 2022. And I had put in two private suites and I had plumbing ran to one of them. And I couldn't figure out what, what they were best for. And I, I had a couple of different opportunities where I had maybe thought I could do some different things, but nothing was clicking um, that felt really aligned to what I wanted to offer to guests. So, you know, we had a couple of offerings. Someone wanted to do like tooth gems and there was permanent makeup conversation and nothing just really felt like I wanted to co-brand my business with these other offerings. And so um, like late last year, I was just thinking a little bit more about it. And I had probably seen some stuff on uh, TikTok and on Instagram of people receiving those experiences, uh, in our local market. And I was like, that would be such a dream to receive. And when I think back to myself as a young stylist, how I built my clientele was through incredible wash house experiences, the scalp massage. That was how I built, I think, trust. And then it was on caring for their scalp and their hair through doing different treatments. So it felt like when I really started to kind of zoom out and think about it, I was like, what is, what helped me get to where we are today? Mm. And it was really based into that foundation. So it just felt like it kind of clicked. And I, I might've mentioned it maybe to you, and I think I had posted it like in a school and I was like, I'm thinking of putting in a head spa. And I, I don't know if you like hyped me up and you're like, yes, that would be great for you. Or I don't actually know exactly where that came, but it, I was like, in, I felt inspired by it and it was nice to feel inspired. It was like such a nice thing to feel that creativity again. And, um, you know, it just, the little, the parts started to come together and I mentioned it to a few people on our team and, um, I think 
there was probably like these big eyes like okay what does that actually mean right like you want us to shampoo more what (laughs) yeah um you know and it was like I you know I bought these like little massagers and I was like hey I just want to try these things on and you know I was taking guests a bit um at this time last year and I was just talking with people you know that was that's always been my favorite part um as an owner was the opportunity to talk to a lot of guests every day you know some days you might have 30 people in the salon and to be able to talk to that many people about like what was the best part of your experience right so all of that like it it may feel like it's just like social but for me it actually is a lot of just hearing what people have to say and the common thread was always my favorite part is the scalp massage so um it just felt like a really great opportunity to bring it all together I love it. And yes, I am your hype person. I will be (laughs) anyone that wants to go all in on experience, particularly tapping into the skinification trend, which has been going on for years, by the way. I, uh, if you need a hype person, I'm here. So what are the guests saying about the experience? I've seen some things on social. They seem really excited. So Again, it was interesting. I had, I was very fortunate. I, I, um, I found a bed locally that uh, someone else was looking to, um, it wasn't working out inside their business. And I love Facebook Marketplace. Um, but <laughs> the reason why I do that is really just to kind of tie this all together. I, um, it's really important to me to try to reduce and reuse materials whenever at any time inside my business. And so um, I had shared that I had uh, purchased a bed locally on my Instagram stories. And I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, And my inbox was filled from people from stylists in our community to our longtime guests to friends of mine from growing up. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is such a great fit for you. I could totally see this being your vibe. Um, I'm so excited. So we started out with like a soft launch. And uh, what that looked like was just kind of getting things moving. And I knew that it wasn't going to be perfect. And I, I had to try to kind of set that expectation across our team as well, that like, it's not going to be perfect. And there's going to be stuff but we're going to still create a really great experience for people. And we're just going to get their feedback so that we can refine the experience, refine what works, see what we can stick to. And, and the common theme has just been that it's been like a beautiful oasis of relaxation. It's like a little cocoon. Um, You can still sometimes hear a little bit of like the salon conversation, but it's still like, we, we really try to like honor the space for what it gets to be. And yes. the feedback has been just, um, just really incredible. People feel cared for. Uh, one of the, 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 some of the feedback we had gotten last week, one of our guests had shared that it felt so nurturing to her um, as she was resting and, and laying back. It reminded her of her childhood when her mother would wash her hair. And like, that's powerful stuff to be able to participate in something like that for someone. Um, And it feels like you're like, you're like loving on someone. You're really nurturing them in a way that is different than what it would, it's like behind the chair when you're washing out like a bleach retouch or, you know, a full head of color. It's, it's a different vibe. And, um, you know, there's many salons that do a great wash house experience with, color and cut, you know, there's a few that I've experienced early in my career. And, um, and I remember how magical that was, but this feels different. This feels like intimate, but it's high touch and it's totally focused on the gas. Um, and yeah, I, it just, it's such a nice experience to give to someone. It feels good to yourself to, to be able to be a part of that. And I, I love, I love that part of it is you had mentioned to me that uh, one of the team members was like, oh my gosh, I love delivering this experience because it, it calms me down. It grounds me, which I imagine that would be like a, a massage therapist versus, you know, a, a colorist or, or a hairstylist. It, it's just a different energy. 
Uh, and, and so I, I love that, that not only are you creating that for the guests, you're also creating opportunities for the team to be able to have that, those deeper connections and that in a sense, downtime, because it, it's again, a, mm-hmm. it's an energy shift, right? Mm-hmm. And that's something that, again, we're still learning a bit of the timing of it because there's like, <laughs> it, it, I mean, and this is so, so true just in business where there's like such a duality of like, I want that experience for my guests and for our team to be like a restorative experience. And you know, when you're a, a a busy space, we have 14 chairs. Um, there's also, you know, we have to turn the, the bed over. We have to get the room prepped for the next guest. So their yeah. experience is bomb too, right? So there is this like, it's like, how do you hold, I guess, both, right? Which is, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's a life experience. But, um, you know, to make sure that it still feels like that the guest gets that full experience and that they never feel rushed. For sure. Even if the next guest is waiting and that the next guest that's waiting never experiences like a rushed vibe. Um, yep. You know, and so, and we've had to work through, you know, some things in that it, it isn't perfect, but I will say that our team that's here, I believe at their core, every single person wants every guest to feel that vibe when they're here. And so everyone's collective commitment to create that is, is really inspiring to be around. It's awesome. I love that. You know, and, and we're there, there, you were talking about duality and, and all of that. And I think about, I had the opportunity to get a scalp facial for the first time, really first time, which yeah. for someone who's been into scalp care for decades, right. Mm-hmm. Um, I just have never experienced it to that, to that level. And there's a an amazing space here in Portland called Pinecone Healing, and and Lindsay does an incredible job, and so uh, she invited me in to experience this scalp facial, and I've never my scalp and hair have never felt so good. Like I'm in, yeah, in, like I I know this stuff, but mm-hmm. it, it it was it was drastically different than how it normally feels. And so that really caught me by surprise in an awesome way was that it was like, wow, mm-hmm. I've never, because it's hair- like the tactical part of like your actual like texture, your own sensory experience. It, it isn't just in that moment. It's like when you go home, a hundred percent, everything so, feels different. Yeah, I felt totally yeah. like, I mean, honestly, it felt like I had just gotten some like body scrub, like. Mm-hmm. at the old Korean spas that I used to go to in LA like it, it felt yes. so I I was surprised I, I was actually yeah. surprised at how the actual efficacy of the treatment itself of the experience of everything that goes into it how different I mm-hmm. felt physically like physically on my head uh which mm-hmm. is great okay we I mean this episode sorry. 17 hours I'm sorry. So you yeah. were talking about things that are aligned with the mint hair crafting brand. You were talking about why you're not doing tooth gems or why you're so into reducing waste. And that's all aligned with the mint hair crafting brand. And, 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 and so is really being really deeply involved in the local community. And recently you hosted a oh, puppy yoga, puppy yoga um, adoption fundraiser with a local rescue I again have never seen so many of your folks just beside themselves excited about this tell me what inspired that and and a little bit about how how you how you did this so um I am a I'm an advocate for rescue work um specifically uh the city of Detroit has a lot of need um, and I have the privilege to be a fur mom to um, a foster failure from the city of Detroit um, Municipal Shelter. And uh, for a season of my life, I, I volunteered pretty actively. Um, in 2019, uh, every weekend I was volunteering there and, and helping to try to create awareness. And, um, you know, and things changed in 2020. It, it, it shifted everything. And so... Um, I wanted to f- still find ways that my business could contribute and um, support different nonprofits. So um, 
we decided to do puppy yoga and I, yoga has been a, a practice of mine for many years. It's a big part of how I try to take care of my mind and my body. Um, and I love animals. <laughs> so the two just kind of felt like they aligned. And I went to a puppy yoga um, event in a neighborhood that I grew up in a few months back. And one of my girlfriends was like, you should do this for your birthday. And I was like, I know. So the whole idea originally was that it was going to be me and like, I was going to host it and all my friends would come and we would raise money. And it would just be me and my friends doing yoga with puppies for my birthday. That was the idea. But what happened was that I posted about it and tickets sold out within, it was like 30, I think within the first like 24 hours, we sold 38 of 50 tickets. And none of my, I mean, maybe a handful of my friends bought tickets. But a majority were people that like either were existing guests or people who from the animal welfare community um, that bought tickets and they were like, this is amazing. So, um, yeah, it was it was super successful. We raised I want to say it was like eighteen hundred dollars or twenty two hundred dollars for Friends of Detroit Animal Care and Control um, to support spay and neuter efforts and um, offsetting the the financial costs of the fosters um, who take animals out of the shelter. We met a ton of new people that came into the salon, which was awesome. Uh, one of our local coffee shops hosted and they sponsored coffee for all of the volunteers and the people who came to do yoga. So that was really special. And we got to hang out with um, about a dozen dogs throughout the day. We did two different classes and it was it was just so sweet, so precious. And, you know, of course, I would love to support the older dogs that really need help getting out of the shelter, of course. Um, it's challenging because that's just not the right environment for some of the older dogs. So we may do sure. uh, like an adoption event in the future, but the puppies, it just brought everybody so much joy. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cute. You were talking uh, earlier, talking about the the bed that you got from Mel and how much you love Facebook marketplace. You oh, also yeah. <laughs> talked, talked with me several times about how you engage in local Facebook groups, which is brave by the way, um, but how you've done it in a way that's helped you build relationships and attract new new guests to, to the salon. Can you can yeah. you share a little bit with us about how you do For that sure. in a healthy way and not get into like typical face local Facebook group, you know, that the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that I only have control over myself mm -hmm. and I have found for myself, I usually don't get overly involved in any of the um, dialogue that is feels uh, divisive. But what I find is that there's also a really large segment of the population in our local market that post in community groups that they're looking for a salon or a hairstylist. Yep. Um, and oftentimes what they're looking for, they're not always, the guests don't know what they're really looking for, right? They're like, I'm looking for someone who is available this week. And what they're really needing is actually like a specialist who might have availability this week, but that the, the reason why they're looking is because they're not having good experiences other places, right? right. Um, or availability, right? Which, you know, we've talked in, in depth about. Um, guests are, they want ease of booking. So um, I, uh, so I go into a lot of the Facebook groups and I just search for um, those active threads of people looking for a, a stylist or a salon. And I introduce myself and a lot of the things that you've taught me about ease of booking. So, you know, I'm dropping URLs in there and, nice. um, and also just letting people know that like, they're going to get great recommendations in these groups as well from other salons. Um, but yeah. we'd be happy to have them um you know and sometimes there's conversations about pricing and people get really passionate about that and there's stylists in our market who will get passionate about the pricing and I, and I understand but it's not how I want to represent my brand so 100%. um you know I just see myself out on those conversations but <laughs> um nice healthy yeah. boundaries Stacey <laughs> but but it works and we meet a lot of new people that way so um, and then of course we have guests who shout us out and say like, I love going to mint hair crafting, or you should see Stacy or you should see Taylor. So when we get that, I also want to acknowledge those guests that I am paying attention yeah. to their referrals. So, um, you know, I'll always comment back and let them know that we appreciate that. 
I love that. You know, I've been spending more time on Reddit. I, I don't know if I've shared that over the last, yeah. maybe in A school I've shared that because I'm not on Twitter anymore. And threads is fine, but I, I just needed a, something else, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much I actually like it because it it's so searchable. It's so, there's so many great conversations happening, it, whether it's in the salon industry or otherwise, you know, whether it's new stuff or, you know, topics that I'm interested mm -hmm. in. It's the same type of thing though, where there are consumers every day, like help, like I'm looking for a hairdresser. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I love that. I love that you shared with us what healthy boundaries look like in those situations, because it's a lack of boundaries that get us sucked into the internet drama that is so incredibly unhealthy. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I, I do get nervous. I, oh, it's taken me I years bet. of building up my confidence to engage in those community groups. Um, but I've had very great success in it. Love and it. so I, yeah. That's great. Where do you spend the, when you're working on your business versus in, cause I know you still take guests behind the chair when you're working on the business, where would you say you spend the majority of your time? Like how, what is that? You know, I thought, I always thought that I would have it figured out by now. It's been eight years. And I thought that I would be like, oh, you know, I, I have it scheduled and it's this way. I think it, it does ebb and flow. Um, the last two years has been because we did a build out and we moved. It was, it's been a lot of like figuring out how this building that wasn't a salon to make it function mm -hmm. like a salon. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot of, you know, stuff that wasn't glamorous or pretty. Operations. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll not, say the, not the sexiest. No, important. Um, I spend in, important. I, I probably when I say working on my business, it's really been working very closely with my salon coordinator, who is like the face of the business, um, supporting her knowledge and how I want our guests to be communicated with through email, text and phone. Um, and she does an incredible job upholding like that brand identity by how she communicates. It's like, it's in, it's inspiring to see how open she has been to learning and then doing and then you know we can course correct and we can pivot when things aren't going great and um it's just been really inspiring so a lot of my time has actually been spent supporting her which through that supports of course our guests um and i think it does support our team i think oh yeah you know, there, i know there's a lot of conversation in the industry about you know, removing a desk or not having a desk. And you and I have worked a lot with that. And I think it's actually something that I see so much value in because of the consumer demand. People are looking for it to be easy. Or an and I think there's, only, yeah. And you can only automate so much. So, <laughs> so that's really been what I've been focusing a lot of my effort on is like how I want our guests to be communicated with. Um, and like the vibe, the tone, the punctuation like Love all it. of that yeah and um it's been on that and then of course just responding to guests when they do share reviews I spend a lot of time on that um and then uh a quite a bit of time you know just trying to connect with my team and and observe how they're working um in a way to see what I can do that that the space can work differently for them and then just learning what they kind of need because there's been a lot of evolution for the stylist needs in the last few years through the consumer's needs that have evolved. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. I want to go back to you talking about the front desk thing. So he, here's where the, here's where the red flag, this is really for our listeners and you are, Stacey, you already know this. We have to be careful when we're speaking in absolute. So someone saying front desks don't belong in salons. That is, absolute black and white thinking and does not take into consideration the brand story and the brand strategy, which a, a big part of that is experience, right? So mm -hmm. in Stacy's case, strategically, strategically, because of the brand experience, brand promise of mint hair crafting, a, a, a live human being there to facilitate that experience is of premium value. And that has nothing to do with an actual desk. It has to do with the brand promise and the experience Stacy wants guests to have and the team. 
and the team down. So we have to be careful when we're like, oh yeah, everyone's saying nobody needs a desk. And it's like, well, that's, that's not true. We don't know what people need until we have a better understanding of their brand experience, promise, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, yeah. let's move on. Uh, <laughs> so we do share um, a love of Taylor Swift. Uh, I'm yeah. not going to lie. <laughs> You got a millennial Swifty and a Gen X Swifty here. And of course, you know, Missy drops quite the 31 <laughs> song fucking album, The Tortured Poets Department. Do you have a favorite on that? I know it's hard, but. Yeah. So um, I was thinking about that when we talked about what we would be talking about. Um, so I do love I Can Do It With a Broken Heart because I do really, I feel like that song was written for me. <laughs> um, it just really, it just really um, captures the essence, I think, that of my own lived experience as, as a woman and as a business owner um, in the last handful of years, uh, like since like 2019. Um, and I also love the black dog, but that's because she mentions my favorite band from childhood, the starting line. So, <laughs> which was like just such a cool moment for those guys. Um, so that was really cool. I love the black dog. Yeah, and you follow them on social. Mm -hmm. They dropped yeah, the merch. I mean, they really, yeah, no, it was in. genius what they did with yeah. it. And like, I get to, I have an opportunity to see them, uh, tour this summer in Vegas and I'm so excited. Starting line. Like it was, yeah. And it's just like so cool for those guys. So yeah. I love it. I love it. I mean, same. I can do it with a broken heart, you know, again, for all the reasons. So, so relatable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then since, since the weekend, the smallest man who ever lived has become like my new favorite based on the performance in Paris. I am like the most like Broadway gay person. Like I don't talk <laughs> much about that. Because, I mean, I don't really have a personal brand, so I don't really talk about personal stuff much. But I've always been obsessed with music. I've always been obsessed with theater. I've always been obsessed with Broadway. I saw Wicked's original cast. I saw Rent's original cast. Like, I am, like, like in it. And that performance is so theater, and it's so emotional, and it's so, like, well, she even said, it's Female Rage the Musical. Like, I just, oh, so good. So good. Um, so speaking of poetry, do you have a favorite quote? A quote oh my that goodness. kind of like leads you, speaks to you? A favorite. I may not have a direct favorite, but this is something, I'll share with you something that my mom shared with me. I have it in my office. Um, it was really sweet. She had it framed for me, um, but it says, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived is to have succeeded. And that's um, to credit, that's uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, but yeah. That's really so, yeah. And you have yeah. done that, and you have done that. <laughs> you do that, that's what you do every single day. Stacy, where can we find you and Myth Haircrafting on the socials? Uh, we're on Instagram and we do a, a little, I'm TikTok light on that, it, but we're on TikTok too. <laughs> um, and we're on Facebook and um, I'm at Stacy Rack Hair on Instagram. And I share a bit of my life as an owner. I've actually dialed back a lot on sharing that because um, there's just so many narratives that you could tell as an owner. And, um, and I haven't really found which feels the most authentic to me. Um, and I, I don't really like the, yeah, anyways. It's, it's not uh -huh. Okay, yeah. so you can find Mint Haircrafting at Mint Haircrafting. <laughs> yeah. On all the socials on the web. And find Stacy at Stacy with an E, Rack, R-A-C-H. R-A-C-K. Sorry, R-A-C-K. Rack. Stacy yeah, Rack, Rack Hair. Hair. Yeah. Stacy mm -hmm. Rack. Oh, that's half your name, right, Stacy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can find Passion Squared on the socials at Passion Squared and on the web, passionsquared.net. You can always DM us. I always love hearing from you all. And if this episode 
is something that resonates with you and you feel like it would be super valuable, I'd be so grateful if you shared it with your hair besties and to help our podcast become more discoverable to other folks like you. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, I'd be so grateful if you dropped a rating or a review on the app. Stacy, thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I adore you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so proud of you. And uh, thank, thank you, you for thank you. all of your guidance and your time. I really appreciate you. Oh, it's my it's my privilege and my honor. And thank you everyone for listening. We're so grateful for you. And I hope you have a peaceful day wherever you are. Bye.